Hello, friends. This is Pastor Benjamin Faircloth of Ignited Church uh, Life.com and from uh, Prophetic Worldview. And I am so excited about my uh, guest today and this opportunity uh, to to bring him on here in just a minute. But it really doesn't need any introduction. Uh, Steve Quell, stevequell.com. Uh, I, I'm just grateful that he would take the time to be with me today to interview uh, and to talk about what's happening in the world today. As you know, things are just accelerating all around us. Convergences are happening. And it's just a, a very ominous time, but it's a very uh, awesome opportunity, if you will, for the kingdom of God. So uh, stevequell.com, I want you to check out his website if you can. You need to get a part of the subscription of uh, private briefings also for uh, Q files. Uh, he'll give you some more information on that if he will. Uh, go to his other websites, generations, uh, gen six, excuse me, dot com, safe trek dot com, uh, renaissance precious metals. Uh, there's just so much information on his website. I go there every day, uh, thousands of times, it seems like, but I'm there all the time just looking at the information. It's a plethora of information. And if you don't know what's going on, it's your fault. You can find out what's happening in the world today by going to Steve Quell. Dot com. Steve Quell, thank you so much, sir, for being here. I appreciate you. Well, Pastor Faircloth, it's so timely that we're on today because it's no longer you wait a month, you can wait this length of period. It's happening almost moment by moment. And ladies and gentlemen, we're told to redeem the time. And so as, as uh, Pastor Faircloth and I have been talking just in the interview we did yesterday and then a couple emails back and forth, we either one of us cannot shake the fact that we are on the prophetic time clock of God, where God's going to arise and he is going to judge the nations. God just doesn't step out and say, I'll be back and I'll just let these guys pull it all together. Uh uh. We're being pulled apart in all dimensions. We're facing instantaneous World War III and instantaneous World War III. This is going to be unlike anything everybody has expected by looking historically at World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, any place and every place, it will be so different because it will be decided, Pastor, in the first 90 to 120 seconds. That's how soon it will be decided. And I think as Christians, we need to understand something, that there's a whole lot of people going into eternity instantly, and the majority is going to go directly into hell. Someone will be in the hair salon, getting a haircut, eating in a restaurant, pumping gas. But when it happens, whatever normal life was up until that point, just routine, it's all challenged instantaneously in eternity. And that's why we as fellow believers, Pastor, we've got to really be praying. And I know you do, and I know most of our followers do, and our, the people that God's given us you know, the ability to speak into their lives, but it's that Im important. And I think if people will pray every day, Lord, give me somebody to share Jesus with, because the bewilderment in this country is off the charts. The anger, the angst, the frustration, uh, the, the financial situation is dire. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, here's the thing. When God judges nations, he's, he strikes a staff of bread. And ladies and gentlemen, right now we're watching, you know, brothers and sisters, we're watching the most economically and economic cataclysmic time and period. So, mm -hmm. Pastor, you know, it's becoming, um, you know, uh, how should I say this? Uh, uh, it's becoming so obvious that even the biggest skeptic or the, uh, the you know, the biggest party in pagan had better consider his ways. Because I want everyone to just think about this. 250 million Americans going instantly into eternity, and instantly meaning if they know Jesus, they're going to the presence of the Lord. If they don't know, they're going to an eternal hell. And we're told in Scripture, you don't get out. There's no get out of hell uh, free cards. So, you know, I think it's the, uh, the responsibility and the weight of the time. Jesus' burden is light and his yoke is easy, but the weight of the darkness, the shadows that are upon us, the, the great darkness that comes when no man can work. And so in essence, I think it's critical that these two 
uh, our, our, our two interviews, obviously the one you did with me and the one I'm doing with you today, they go piggyback because it was not that we had enough time. We were teasing each other. We should probably just go for a five hour introduction and then get into the message. But the point is, is that it's gone dire just since the last time you and I were on, you know, what, 24 hours ago, it's even escalated to where Poland's shutting down its uh, uh, airspace, where we're seeing B-52s, B-2 bombers, B-1, all nuclear bombers headed over to the area of Russia. We've seen the uh, statement of President Medvedev, it's former president, but still president of the Security Council saying, you guys, you don't think we don't know you're doing all this because of us and you're going to have a red line you're going to cross it, and it's going to be over in a minute. And one of the thing is, is that or the major point is, is that Russia has, I would say this, they're not the ones that even started the whole we're going to bomb the world with nuclear weapons. That was the United States construct. And ladies and gentlemen, we cannot back up our bullying any longer. We've listened to too much bully manure to be able to, you know, basically bully anyone else. We Our might does not make right. We do not have the God of heaven fighting for us. We do not have God on our side. And this is the, if we can get one thing across today, Pastor, it's this. This is the nation that declared war on the living God. And most of claimants to be followers of, of of Christianity were silent. They were silent. Well, I made my vote count. That's not where your vote counts. Your prayers count. Your votes do not count if there's no follow through and follow up. We, we've lost accountability. We've lost responsibility. And now we're about to lose everything else. And I'm on record. I want people to understand this. I do not believe there's a political solution to a spiritual problem. I believe men are still looking for a king and, and, and they want a political pundit, whether it's a former president or some new guy. Nothing's going to change. Our country's bankrupt. Yesterday, Powell made the statement. Bottom line is we can't sustain this. That means force majeure is coming into place. That simply means that at some point, the American dollar becomes worthless. I was looking for a worthless American dollar, but see, I have silver here, so I don't have worthless American silver dollars at hand. But the point is, is that I don't know how, and I'll throw it right back to you, sir. How do we, except the Holy Spirit places the urgency of what we're talking about, and people go beyond the video screen, my video screen, your video screen, our screens, they've got to see quote unquote, God's picture, but not tainted by man's perversion. And I'm talking coming from that which has abandoned the faith, given heed to seducing spirits, and in essence, having a form of uh, false godliness and, and denying the spirit thereof. Go ahead, sir. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I, I just want to let you go. I mean, this to me, this is part two of our, our last time we got together for sure. Uh, and it's spontaneous, by the way, folks. We didn't have anything really pre-planned. Uh, I know you have a scripture. We want to share that in a minute. But Steve, as you were talking, one of the things that just, just kept going around in my mind, we're talking about urgency. We're talking about all the stuff that's going on. And you've been doing this a long time. I don't I don't remember how many years you've been doing this, but you, you would be the best uh, scale, if you will, or, or measurement by when you started out and how you felt as far as urgency and then now, fast forward to these years, uh, what does that seem to you? How does that seem to you? Does, has the urgency just redlined? Is it pegging for you? Where, where are you at? And explain that to us. I'm, I'm more of the scriptures of, uh, you know, how sh should we then live seeing that the end of all things is before us? First of all, you know, I had an unusual encounter with Jesus. I saw him face to face, uh, came into my bedroom. I fell at his feet as dead. People need to know the scripture commands all of us to know those who labor amongst you. And I tell people, look, I didn't, God really did a number on me, but he gave me a calling to have a Joseph's ministry. And I didn't know who Joseph was. I joke. I, 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 I was so ignorant of the things of God, but God saved me just with a simple presentation that his son, Jesus Christ, would forgive me. And I'm sitting in a Hal, uh, Hal Lindsey meeting at the university, student union ballroom, and I'm the president of the most pagan fraternity on campus, okay? I'm like, uh, you know, not a poster child for anything related to godliness. But when Hal spoke the word and said, Jesus loves you, 
And I instantly, he looked in my direction. I was sat kind of close to the front speaker. And, and you know, it hit me. Well, oh, this Jesus must be the son of God because uh, only he could forgive me. I said, there was no, there was no uh, attempt at my part to cover up who I was. I was, I was what I was until Jesus changed it all. So I asked Jesus into my heart. He prayed a prayer for all those. And then I went home and I go in. I lived in uh, my mother's home, I don't know, a mile away from the university. And uh, what was interesting, I came into my bedroom, which was in the basement, and the appearance of the Lord is there. I fall at his feet as dead. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get up. I told people, I tried to do push ups and go, what's going on? I mean, I'm, I'm zero literate in Christian uh, experience, thought, anything. Okay. Right. And I couldn't even, I, I was just flabbergasted. And then Jesus lifted, reached over, lifted me up. He looked into my eyes, Pastor, and every mm. cell in my body, every every micro particle, macro particle, everything of, of energy force, vibration, frequency, all radiated with the complete forgiveness of me. And it blew my mind. And it so blew my mind that uh, you know, I just, what do you say? And then he told me, he's giving me a Joseph's ministry. And I, again, I didn't know Joseph's what, but he also gave me a panorama of history. Now, here's the interesting thing. I've been writing now for, I don't know, five decades. That mm -hmm. makes me, what, five decades old in the things of God. And the thing is, is that the many of the things the Lord has shown me, he showed me that would come to pass. I would write about them, everything from transhumanism to the final war, all this stuff, uh, you know, things that weren't on anybody else's uh, radar. But then he told me an interesting thing. He said, some of that which I have shown to you, I'm only going to release as it's shortly to come to pass. Wow. So what and what is, is uh, and you know, look, I... Uh, there's nothing I can say except thank you, Jesus, because I was truly uh, in the presence of the Lord. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I'm going, God, whoa. But for three hours, <laughs> and it was three, I, I was just in the presence of the of the living Son of God. When Jesus, after about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes, he, he, the, the glow in the room, and by the way, people say, what did he look like? He doesn't look like the AI generation of Jesus. I will tell everybody. <laughs> my eyes have seen, my ears have heard, and, and the, the love of God, this is an amazing thing. The love of God is so transformative, and that's what you and I were talking about yesterday, Pastor, mm -hmm. that you cannot have an encounter with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Now, I know not everybody has this, okay? It doesn't make me anything outside of more accountability to share right. what the Lord has given to me. And, and this, if I would say the mandate that I've always lived under by the grace of God and even backslid through, I, I wish I could say my life was a perfect example. No, it wasn't. <laughs> but the point is, is that through it all, through it all, I'm learning to trust in Jesus. You know, it's a learning process, and God will take us through it all if we'll give it over to him, all of it. So at this point, I, I got to be honest with this. This isn't smug. It isn't. It, it doesn't surprise me, okay? And in my life, the challenge has been to release things in the Lord's timing. The First thing that, that the prophets on YouTube, and I use that, and by the way, I've never ever made the statement, or could it be claimed that I'm a prophet? I'm not. God said, I'm going to appoint you a watchman. Well, I didn't know if that's some guy that, you know, fixed Rolexes or <laughs> or Doxa watches, you know, uh, so so I really didn't. So the thing is, is that the, uh, uh, how should I say this, the, the uh, destruction of the pure prophetic word of God the seduction from the pure prophetic word of God and the absolute, uh, uh, how should I say this, false prophecy has robbed the people of God of their encouragement, their admonishment, yeah. their need to really get right with Jesus. And so I've, I was given the most wonderful ministry. It's called the ministry of Jesus, sharing Jesus. I got news for you. People say, well, where did you go to university? Blah, blah, blah. You know, hermeneutics. One, I got to tell you a funny story. This is funny. You'll appreciate this. A uh, couple of theologians years ago, probably decades ago, got a hold of me and they said, we listen to you and we can't stand your heart. Let's see. 
hermeneutics and homiletics, okay? Right. And I said, well, I'm just learning to play the harmonica, so maybe that will you know, be better than that. <laughs> in essence, there is a doctrine of the Nicolaitans that God yeah. hates, right. that there is a professional clergy and you have to come to him. It's a whole fallacy, again, of the priesthood. There is no such thing as yeah. purgatory. I'm sorry if that upsets Catholics. It, it doesn't matter what it upsets. There is one high priest between God and man. That's a man, Christ Jesus. Yes. So I would say this, that that the events happening today are, how should I say this, not, not so troubling. But mm -hmm. what's more troubling to me is the response of those who claim to be Christians, the response of God's people to the events, as if they, you know, the, the four monkeys, see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. And then I added the fourth monkey, by the way, it was breathe no evil, okay? Because <laughs> like for biological weapons and stuff. So it, it, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, they used to, you know this, you've been in uh, full gospel for a long time. Any The definition of fanatic is someone who loves Jesus more than you do. Right. Man, I remember being on Assembly right. of God board, okay? Mm -hmm. And boy, was that boring, you know? <laughs> and, and you know, praying and praying. When God would answer, and he would answer specifically, yeah. the guys I was on the board with, not all of them, but two of the loudest guys, well, that couldn't be God. And so I finally quit and said, you're telling me we're praying. We believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God is giving a specific direction, an answer to specific prayer, and that couldn't possibly be God. Uh, from that point on, I was never on a board again, and that's a true story. So the events happening today yeah. are so, how should I say this, beyond the average person's ability to uh, embrace it because of the ramifications. And now I don't even use the word ramifications. I kind of, you know, I make up words because I try to get people's attention. But now the ramifications have changed to damnifications. Right. I'm not talking right. about taking the name of the Lord in vain. I'm talking about the, the entire world is at war against the living God under the direction and the orchestration of Lucifer, who became Satan, the mm -hmm. adversary. And so, uh, Pastor, we have more people wanting to accommodate the powers of hell to be politically correct to be oh we just gotta love this the sinner and hate the sin by the way ladies and gentlemen that's not bible we right. preach against sin which is a power but we don't spare the sinner by saying oh he's woke you know and he'll he'll come to his normal uh hair color when he comes to his senses or she'll <laughs> she'll put back on what was chopped off. No, you can't do that. Right. Uh, and I have another name for this country, and we've become a mutilation nation, okay? Right. Mutilation That's nation. Good. There's nothing more heinous in my view and in the Bible's view than the shedding of innocent blood. You know, I write a lot of stuff on ancient history, fallen angels, giants, I mean, biblical stuff, Genesis 6, yep. and trying to get people to understand that we in the church have received the old gods, little g's, I'm talking fallen angels, I'm talking demons. A demon is not a fallen angel. You see, there's 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 confusion in the body of Christ. A right. demon is a disembodied evil spirit. They right. were produced with the um, uh, mating of a fallen angel on earth with an earth woman producing a hybrid like Goliath. Goliath is killed by King David, and that spirit becomes a demon or an evil spirit on the earth. Well, there's a lot of hybrids in history, and that's why Noah and his family were the, the boy, I don't know where I'm going this way, Noah and his family were the only ones perfect in a generation. That didn't mean they, uh, you know, were going to Sinners Anonymous. It was they were genetically pure. They, it had nothing to do with the morality, uh, you know, and obviously we know the situation of what happened after the ark landed, but it's the same thing with all the beautiful animals that God brought to, to the ark. God brought them two by two. And, you know, I've been at this 50 years and all of a sudden, a couple of months ago, I'm just not thinking about Noah's ark. And the Lord said, do you know why I brought the, the animals, Steve? He said, because I was the only one that could bring the pure genetic stock that i had created so wow. right that's a very powerful thing yeah. ladies and gentlemen yeah. so as someone who's written about transhumanism uh the, the term i coined i don't know decades ago and it's not that i can't forget it's just that i'm trying to bring you know like when when i do an interview 
with you. I'm trying to be consistent and I'm, I don't want to be like Speedy Gonzalez all over the point, but it's kind of like those new computer screens where to present a picture, you're grabbing this image and this image. You've right. seen them, you know, on yeah. the glass panel. So in dealing with the whole genetic Armageddon, that was a term I coined. And when I say that, it's not to brag. It's this. I could not have done what God called me to do had he not given it. I have a constitution that runs my life. It's called the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. But it's also the gratefulness. A man has nothing that he hasn't received from above. Seriously. I mean, I could do a great job at debauchery. That didn't come from above. You know, <laughs> I could do a great job at sinning. That didn't come from above. But we have to realize that every man, this is the thing that puzzles me. We got mucous membrane puking, taking, pe mucous member puking, uh, preachers in the puke pits. That's, I'm going to try to get all my peas together. And they're not, they're not bringing out the glory of God. They're not bringing out the magnificence of Jesus. You cannot present the Lord Jesus Christ as God has uh, given us the revelation of his word, given us the uh, witness in his spirit without going, wow. And so I'm hoping that these uh, you know, interviews you and I are doing together, it, it, Pastor, that people are going to see, they want to hunger. Because when you go to Sunday and you bring a message, the Lord speaks a clear word of of uh, prophetic direction, prophetic guidance. And one of the things that I noticed, I, I remember that the very first time I heard you, I was going, this is a flattery. But I said, this is a shepherd that God has raised up to, to basically minister to all the scattered sheep around the world. And you, I know, you know, I've been, you know, all over the place and literally in the excuse me, the world with my website and stuff. But oh, yeah. what was interesting is what is more important than a pure word at that specific moment in time for a specific people? And what's interesting is, is that, you know, you're, you're like exhorting people. It's the lateness of the hour. So, you know, did you, and let me ask you a question. Well, I'll, I'll flip it back a little bit, but uh -huh. did you, what was the turning point from what I would call regular ministry, everything you do, you travel, you preach, but where God laid it on your heart that and said, Benjamin, you've got to present this to my people. In other words, when the Lord shifted you from, you know, what I would say, you're, you're a minister, a preacher, but into the calling people to the reality of the lateness of the hour. Well, can you can you look back and say there's a specific minute or moment or series of events? Yeah, it, it, it seemed like it was, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, something like that, when I, I just began to to look at America uh, through a different lens. It started to be more prophetic as opposed to nationalistic, patriotic, you know, I'm a veteran, those different things, love my country, served it. Uh, and then I just had a moment where I, I wept and wept and wept. Uh, for our country and our soldiers and and our forefathers, everybody who shed their blood, and I looked at this absolute puke that we were presented with, and it changed my perspective completely, and it my worldview changed, and it became more prophetic, more pronounced, if you will, more uh, precise as to what God was saying to the nations. So it went from mourning to to judgment, to warning, saying, hey, uh, the, the time of tears is over. The, the real tears are coming. I mean, the tears of what used to be and what I was promised, you know, I was promised this utopia land. I was promised, you know, this, the, the, what was that? The old house on the white picket fence, you know, all those different things. And it wasn't happening. And then I watched the debauchery. So it was, it was just a heart transplant for that specific time. I mean, it's just like, God raises us all up at a specific time, and then you have an assignment. I've always had a prophetic call in my life since the time he audibly called me to preach and gave me a supernatural sign in my room, uh, which I haven't shared very much publicly. But it was it was a very impactful moment for me because uh, of my lifestyle. I needed that. I needed to get knocked off my donkey, if you will. <laughs> I was going to use the other word. And uh, and 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 see the living God like like you did. Mine was different, but it nonetheless it was impactful. And so yeah, I would say that was about it. Uh, watching the abomination that causes desolation in our country, you know, 
uh, as you so eloquently put so many times. And uh, I haven't left that message of warning. A lot of people haven't liked it. The people that want a king rather than, you know, the prophet that God gave them, you know, and Samuel, I, I mean, obviously so many people heard that same message from the Lord when they were, you know, uh, wanting when Trump was no longer, uh, you know, going to be in the White House and all the false prophecies and everything, but they wanted their hope. I And I and listen, let me share this. I believe that God will raise up the basis of men. That doesn't mean they're morally. God gives nations leadership according to what they're like. Righteous nations get righteous leadership, unrighteous. But what people are looking to, they're looking for the love of God in all the wrong places. Right. And now, because we're given over, and this is the hardest message, Pastor, I guess this, this is the... I always like to overuse the word bottom line. I've used it 3,495,697,000 times on talk radio, but it, 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 where our nation is given over to judgment. Right. Our nation is not going to rise again. Make America repent or Lord grant us repentance again would have been a better motto because again, we're watching quote the rest of the world puking the American dollar out of its pocketbook, you know, out of its wallet. We're watching a controlled narrative of even the destruction of uh, the press has just been destroyed. Let me give you a good example. The press has been vilifying President Putin the same way he they did President Trump. And Putin is not the guy the press makes him out to be. And I think this is the suicidal uh, exit for the mainstream press. Tucker Carlson went, interviewed President Putin, and it's an amazing interview. By the way, that guy's President Putin. I have one thing to say about him. Number one, he's doing right in the sight of the Lord in this way. He's basically going to just measures. When a man offers just measures, unjust measures, Federal Reserve notes, fractional reserve banking, that's all cursed. But when you start going to just measure, God blesses that. And God can bless nations that honor him, even if the leaders in those nations don't know him. He's defending Western Christianity, okay? Mm -hmm. the, and and the, the West is destroying and destroying the people of God, destroying the heritage of the Lord. And looking at the United States from the world's eyes, we are the mass purveyors of perversion and political uh, uh, insanity worldwide. What else? President Putin has basically made the statement that marriage is a biological male and a biological female. Right. I just call it the, you know, the uh, uh, chromosomally correct uh, creation by the living God. Right. Uh, you know, everything that, that the West is trying to blame him for, I can tell you this, I'm watching, you are too, studied history, you're a veteran. Uh, we're watching the Marxist, communist take over and take down and it's an yeah. uh, it's listen it's accomplished ladies and gentlemen yeah. you can't vote the communist the nation is divided jesus said a house divided mm -hmm. against itself cannot stand do you think really that the all of a sudden there's going to be a blast of of heaven's glory and all the blue states are going to convert to red states i'm talking politically i'm right. uh, i don't believe that but the hardest point, Pastor, is to understand something. God judges nations in history. He may choose to judge all individuals in eternity, but some get judged in, 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 in history too. But there is no fear of the Lord in the land. Only through the fear of the Lord do men depart from evil. We talked about a transformational encounter. And see, when you have the fear of God, that's a reverential awe. It's not like this. That's like what people, when they see the glory of the Lord, and they're in hell right. forever. But the point is, is that that reverential awe and the awfulness, that means God's so amazing. And yet we allow the slaughtering of the, his image bearers. Behold, children are a heritage of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We allow the most heinous, uh, wicked child sex trafficking. And also, uh, listen, all of the historic uh, historic records of child sacrifice pale in comparison to what's going on in America. It, it, it truly does. I mean, yeah. it's one thing to burn a ch child alive. Sorry to be uh, this explicit, but it's another right. thing to 
listen to the rock stars and I don't listen to them, but I listen to their own testimonies, what they do. Oh, human meat is the best. Will mm -hmm. you vampiric, cannibalistic, and I'll stop there or I'll have to repent. So anyway, mm. the, the thing is, is that, <laughs> the, uh, but look at that's who our children have been turned over to. That's, yeah. and, 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 you know, Jesus tells us to, to uh, uh, you know, take up his cross and follow him, deny ourselves. And, and, you know, everybody's taking up their selfie and embracing themselves. And what the devil's done is an interesting thing. He's sure. exported the number one sin in the universe, pride. Because everybody wants to look like a fame, I won't name names, a famous actress who got her billion dollar start in a porn film, learning how to take multiple angles, multiple, you know. So in essence, ladies and gentlemen, yep. we are those who are in the world of selfies and self aggrandizement. They are the faces of death. But I'll go one step further. The faces of damnation. See, no one wants to admit that hell exists. They want to deny it for whatever reason. They want to deny the God of heaven. They want to deny Jesus Christ, King of Kings. They want to deny. And then they want to bring in the fact that these ugly aliens, I'm talking not the illegals, I'm talking about, you know, uh, transmorphic uh, dimensional entities, those kind of aliens, <laughs> you know, they want to right. believe that those ugly creatures created us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. As someone who's, you know, been in this world a long time dealing with all the out of place artifacts, historically, we have bought the biggest lie of baloney, okay? I mean, Oscar Mayer would be jealous because <laughs> they didn't make as much baloney as the history books have recorded. Right. And, you know, the, the thing is, is that we're now at a point in history where confusion, God's not the author of confusion. But yeah, what are we dealing with? Gender confusion? Yeah, who introduced it? Oh, I get it. You know, when I look at the mutilation nation through the eyes of the world, mm -hmm. it literally makes you not only weep, but it just, I'm sorry, but it makes me angry. And right. I know it's possible to be angry and sin not. I'm working on that transform right now. <laughs> but, you know, but the point is, is that, yeah. you know, where is the hatred for the things that God hates. Where is the embracing? And and Pastor, I, I know this. I know that, you know, the scripture I shared with you, you might you might want to share that story because it was pretty neat. Uh, you know, you're you're I'll let you set it up. You're meditating and what we were going to talk about today, and then what I sent you the scripture. Yeah, I definitely want you to do that. Uh, so much to unpack there. You know, I first want to go to this real quick that I wrote this down because you said. It seemed to me when I asked you, you know, the intensity level of you've been doing this so long and now you're seeing stuff come to, come to pass. And you said, well, that doesn't really surprise you. You basically said the response of God's people, what surprises you. And I, I, I'm, I'm like high fiving you because I'm like, that's exactly from my perspective, from my position, my platform, the response of God's people seeing this happening. You've waited a lifetime for it. You, you've you've read about it in scripture, you know, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come quickly, all those things. And now it's it's upon you, upon your nation, and you're lethargic, lukewarm, backslidden, milk toast. I mean, there's just no, you know, what do you call them? Spineless laguinis. I mean, there's 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 no life. You yeah, call them yeah. even jellyfish. Even jellyfish, no <laughs> backbone, just going with the flow. It's out of a, a aquarium. I love it. I mean, but that's exactly, exactly, exactly where we are. And uh, it, it just, I have to just stop there for a second because it amazes me. Uh, and I, I know it amazes the father too, to say, I've poured so much information. I'm talking to the American church, so much revelation. We have the most high powered, high paid preachers on the planet. Uh, the biggest multi-million dollar, I would even scarce to say billion dollar ministries combined, you know, that that are doing what they do. And and this is all we're getting out of it. This is the only life we're getting out of it. You know, the only response we're getting out of it is, is a church that's totally apostate. It just blows my mind again with like yesterday. And by the way, guys, go to stevecall.com. You got to get subscribed to Q files and get this this meat this information uh it's it's all in there and in the uh, private briefings but you know as we were talking it just astounds me how that people 
just are not responding to the stimulus or stimuli of the truth. So it's going to take, as you mentioned, that clap, that thunder, that explosion, that bam, boom, uh, that God's going to produce and bring on us to bring us to that awakening. And so having said that, yeah, last night, I mean, I couldn't sleep very well. Uh, I was just meditating on what we're going to talk about, and I got up, and you had already emailed me at like 2.34, so you must not have slept at all, or not much. And and you had a scripture, and I was like, perfect, that's awesome, because uh, that's exactly the heartbeat of this entire interview. Would you share that, if you have that up there? I don't have it on. I'd have to go into my email and pull it up, but if you okay. can... If I you pull, do it, I'd appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. I could, yeah, it's no problem. It's Isaiah 26, verse 20, and it says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and I'll let you, you know, interpret and, 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 and preach on that, and, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Verse 21, For behold, the Lord cometh, out of his place, that's a powerful place to preach right there, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. That's Isaiah 26, 19 through, or 20 through 21. Need to read the whole chapter, but that's what you gave me. And I said, yeah, that's right. It's a tragedy, it's a travesty that more people don't realize that there is a secret place of the Most High. And that secret place of the Most High literally translates in one, uh, you know, scriptural derivation, the pavilion, in other words, the umbrella, the parasol of his protection. Mm. You know, it, 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 it's the 91st Psalm. But the word, until my indignation, the indignation of God is not a good thing. So I went and looked up all the different Hebrew words, and I'm not going to go there right now, but let me just say this. It is the ultimate expression of God's anger towards sin, towards the entire uh, uh, molestation of his little ones, yeah. of the entire mankind's culminating point in history where he's saying i have brought you this and we know this is scripture because god said if he didn't shorten the days for the elect's sake there'd be no flesh left alive we're there right now in yes, my opinion 100 what i have been crying out to the lord about is i said god you know all these little ones it's the, it's the church look i have no access to grind except with the devil and all of his followers and if they go to first church on the second corner of the third country, blah, blah, blah. I could care less. But what I do care about is there is no fear of the Lord in the land. I, I taught that obviously most people don't know this. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit in itself. That's one of the sevenfold manifestations of the Spirit of God, Spirit of counsel and might. That's right. Uh, fear and wisdom, fear of the Lord. You can't just go, well, I'm going to just go fear the Lord. You have to understand all these giftings, all these revelations, come by the Holy Spirit. But in that passage, what I see is God saying, "You, those of you who love me, get along with me, find out. And everybody's got to find out what that. That's not a geographical location. Right, Somebody right. says, well, do you have that place in Montana? He said, are you kidding me? Montana <laughs> used to be the land of the, uh, you know, with of the frontier spirit. And now it's got another spirit. And trust me, it's not the frontier spirit. You know, right, we, right. we we're seeing this happening all over the country in what we're Western. And thank God, Texas still has it. But the whole Texas uh, political scene is not what we think it is with uh, sure. Governor Greg Abbott. He is a wef -er, OK, yep. and he won't renounce it. But I think this passage in Scripture is it's got listen the lord the scripture this is god's word god is angry with the sinners all the day long he gave jesus as his answer to dealing with sin but how pastor i understand hebrew so clearly what what's going to be our outcome then if we neglect so great a gift of salvation i am tired of uh well actually i'm not just tired i'm fed up 
finished and I won't go there anymore with pastors that will send me emails. Well, you're just so harsh and unkind. Well, you're just such a um um a runny nose brat, you know. Bleep, bleep. And 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 there's there's no life. Right, I can tell right. you this: the right. provocation of the word of God. When God says, "Steve, you're wrong. You're sinning. Repent." I repent. I've learned to do that. Right. But what's um? I'm asking, Pastor. Here's a question for you: When's when's a church? Those who represent the facade of Christianity you knows what I'm saying are going to quit apologizing for the devil and start standing up for Jesus. Well, I think we know that, you know, that's not going to happen, is it? But they're going to stand up against those who stand up for Jesus. And have you thought about that? Because the scripture says they went out from amongst us, but were not of us. Yeah. And, you know, back to the passage in Isaiah, the cry of the innocent blood. I don't know. I, I'm trying to get a revelation from the Lord on that so I can share with God's people. But I do not know how that's going to manifest because if, if you know, Abel's righteous blood cried out to God, you know, after Cain slew him, then I, yeah. I can't imagine the harmonics because the life is in the blood. That's I right. can't imagine the, and most people don't know this, but every human being's DNA has a sonic signature, a sonic signature. I don't know, you know, the realm, but everyone's different. And this is every one of us has a song. It's right. a song of creation unique to us. And the redeemed, people saying, where's that in the word of God? The redeemed in the book of Revelation will get a white stone with a name yeah. on it that no man knows except the one that receives it, ultimate right. identity. Yeah. So I'm thinking, Lord, uh, all these little little brothers and sisters butchered. And Lord, not only the little brothers and sisters that are aborted, but Lord, what about the ones that the political bastards, and I can defend that word biblically, sure. the political bastards are destroying trafficking these children, $140 billion uh, you know, industry. And mm -hmm. by the way, ladies and gentlemen, never lose track of what happened to the children of Maui. The whole world has just said they don't count. They were trafficked into some of the most horrible I can't even go there because I get too mad. And look, right. I, I'm angry. If God can be angry at that sin, so can I. I'm not trying, right. and I'm not God. If I were, I let's just say this: there <laughs> would be some changes in architecture and scenery in Washington D.C. Immediately, I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the, there's, there's no, um, how should I say this? Who's, who's going to, who's going to stand for these little ones against the workers of iniquity? And I, I am, now we're watching our brothers and sisters going to prison for 11 years. That's what they want to throw them in. Five, I think, five or six, protesting abortion. I said, everyone should be writing their senators. Yeah. Everyone yeah. should be writing their congressmen. Everyone should be writing their governors. No matter what their stand is, everyone should be writing letters to the editor. You do what you can do, and you say, this is wrong. And then we find out those, those how would I say this, attempts at human beings that are murdering people in the streets of New York or pulling women by their hair on mopeds, and then yep. they get released, and they flip off. They give the middle finger of fate salute to the nation they've come in to what, pillage and plunder, to take a spoil of. And ladies and gentlemen, it's wrong. It's wrong. That's why I think, you know, listen, we were better off, brother, when we had uh, real lawmen on horses, you know, Samuel Colt and Smith and Wesson <laughs> came later. But, you know, right. and, 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 and Winchester, because there was there was a understanding you cannot stop evil by wishful thinking. And now the uh, everyone who is anti-America, especially the communists that have been imported into the United States, I, I know a lot about the weapons industry. I know a lot about it. That's I've lived in that world for a long right. time. And so telling people that if you understand what's going on, they want you disarmed so they can bring in all their armed butchers just to mow down the people of God. And, and that's why I'm, I'm saying, please, ladies and gentlemen, understand this. You know, one, Machiavelli had a famous statement. I, I like Machiavelli with the statement. He said... Being disarmed causes one to be despised. Now, of course, that's during the Renaissance period or right during that period. Mm -hmm. And in those days, everything was settled with a duel, you know? Uh, right. And so that may not have been the best context, but it should be different in Congress, wouldn't it? Instead of the boys playing with each other in the bathhouse as they were dueling, you know? Uh, true. Uh, the Burr-Hamilton uh, uh, revisit. 
And, and again, ladies and gentlemen, here's mm -hmm. the thing. I want, before the Lord calls me home, I want him to anoint me with a passion that's transferable. That's a good way to say it. Transferable yes. passion. Yes. People say, well, Jesus seems so real to you. I said, that's because Jesus is real to me. And more importantly, it'll be real to you. I, I'm not about, uh, I even hesitate to share my testimony sometimes because I don't want, and, and I'm saying this, I don't want people to think, I know that's not the norm. It should right. be, but it isn't. Right. But it takes that in somebody like me. Look, I love the black sheep. God loves them. I are one, you know, I yeah. were one, and yeah. I am now accepting the beloved. And yes. I think you've heard me say, if uh, if I ever had a uh, uh, ministry name, and I guess I have a ministry, but I would, you know, if I had a church and stuff, and I could tell you stories about that, I would never do it. God bless you for doing it. And I mean <laughs> that genuinely. But, you know, I would call it shoehorn ministries, equipping the saints to walk in the path that the living God has prepared for them before the foundation of the world, you know? Right, he right. set straight path before my feet, having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. There's, <laughs> listen, the good news is that there's plenty of good news, yet everybody that, excuse me, sh should be embracing it right. has has basically run from it. Friendship with the world is enmity with war. It means if you want to get along, and any pastor that says, the wokeness is we've got to have, what was it? Compassion, not condemnation. The mm. Lord God of heaven rebuked that man in Jesus' yeah. name. May his tongue cleave to the roof of his mouth because he cannot rewrite what God has said. This is wrong. I am the creator. Right. Go to the potter's house, Jeremiah. Cannot I, uh -huh. the potter, confirm and conform the clay to my liking? You yes. see, everybody wants to give orders to God or wants to make God fit into their uh, worldview, but very few people want to find out what his is, and especially in Christianity. And I'm sorry, but I love the redeemed of the Lord. I love the redemption of the blood of yes, Jesus. Yes. I love the followers of Jesus. I love my brothers and sisters that love Jesus. But I don't, you know, I'm not interested in going to a Methodist uh, drag queen party. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not interested in watching the most horrific slaughter of little human uh, boys being mutilated. I'll just mm -hmm. use that word. Or mm -hmm. little girls being mutilated. And they're, and I'm going to say this, they're freaking parents. F-R-E-A-K-I-N-G. Yeah. They are freaks. To yes. allow that to happen, because guess what? They couldn't have had their little Johnny, who they want to be Mary, or their little Susie, who they want to be Johnny, if their parents had whacked them, you know? And, right. and again, it's insanity. And, and I know famous statements. I pay attention to what, quote, the, the A-listers say, you know? Yeah. And the A-listers, uh, I don't go searching for it, but they'll make stupid statements. Like one of the most famous singers, the oldest singer now said, I wish my mother would have aborted me. Yeah, I don't think you want to mm. give up the $100 million mansion of Malibu. I don't mm. think you want to give up your toy boys. I don't think you want to give up. I don't think you want to give up this, that, and the other thing. And so, you know, the thing is, is that it sounds really good. Or it's, you know, it's it, it, to them, they think this is a wonderful cause. Yeah, it's just like the WEFers. And, and there's no group of Luciferian devils I have more contempt for, okay? Yeah. Because when they attack the God of heaven, the little weasel, little demon, okay, in mm -hmm. my opinion, Harari, you know, if you pointed ears on him and you'd, you'd swear he jumped out of a kid's, uh, uh, you know, uh, horror nursery rhyme <laughs> book, he says, there is no God, but yeah. you don't need God yet. We're going to make an AI God. Hmm. Well, then what's mm -hmm. the concept of God? And this guy is, you know, he, he, we cannot fight pastor the the insanity of our day outside the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm going to say. Mm. Arguments cease when power flows. And I'm talking power right. from the throne of God. You know this. It only takes one miracle to turn a village around. One yes. miracle. One. It takes one, one supernatural raising somebody who's really dead or, you know, really sick. Not the, you know, the guy in the American church who's got a uh, FM mic going on. He's got a guy out in the audience yeah. standing in line, you know, finding out, uh, see that guy over there, the guy yeah. in the 
whatever, orange sweater. Well, he's got a migraine headache. Good night. You'd watch the guy that used to go, hi, this is blank, bang, pop off. You know, he got in trouble for it. <laughs> yeah. And they they would pre-screen people. They still do this, by the way. Yes, yes. Trying to make them a fake, fake uh, word of knowledge. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're in the presence of the Holy Spirit, he's holy. If I don't fall on my face, I'd say it's not probably the Holy Spirit or at least bow, you know. Uh, the point is, is that there's such a substitutionary, well, how do I say this, fantasy presentation of the power of God that the real is yet to be experienced as it was in the book of Acts, as yes. it will be. But, you know, it's it's like this, Pastor. Uh, you know, you get the people who God brings to your congregation or that will follow you on, uh, you know, these different podcasts all over the world. And you'll say something that changes everything for them. Right. One word, fitly spoken season, beats a Webster dictionary just page by page, you know? Yeah. So again, the, the thing that is, is critical, ladies and gentlemen, getting back to the subject, and I'm sorry to wander, but what I'm trying to do is compress. I don't know that we have another time together because of the situation in the world. This isn't fear talk. You know, I've been accused of fear porn more than I think than anybody on the internet or um, every everything, you know, and I'm saying this, well, I guess it must be in your realm. It's not in mine because right. to tell the truth is the most deadly thing you can do nowadays because in the kingdom of lies, all truth dies until God comes in and says, wrong, now watch. And I think that's what we're at with the scripture I sent you last night because I felt, uh, you saw 234, I just felt, I know the voice of the Lord. Send this yeah. to Benjamin, you know? Yeah. And I did. And I didn't know you were meditating, you know? Yeah. So, so I, I, you know, here's where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to talk about zero point, no, I would call this normal, no more, okay? So NNM, that zero point where everything changes, everything. What happens when you're limited to the food in your fridge, the food in your freezer, whatever storage food you have? What are, what happens when you're limited to the fish in a pond, fish in a river, fish in a lake, deer in the field, deer in the, you know, uh, whatever? Everybody thinks that they're going to go out and be Daniel Boone, and then they forget, wait a minute, there's Kreutzfeld Jacob disease, or Kreutzfeld, Kreutzfeld Jakob disease is how it's pronounced, CJD, mm. a brain form of what's called spongiform encephalopathy. We have it in the uh, deer in the Rocky Mountains, okay? Mm. So it's, a, it's, it's really not a good thing. So what I think it's important for people to understand is this. Normal no more can be, it's going to happen so fast. And I'm getting back to my two minutes, you know. I, I used to watch some of the car movies, obviously like them, of God in 60 seconds. I said, remember this. Most people can't equate to the instantaneous destruction of a hypersonic nuclear war that can be pretty much uh, initiated and ended. And ended the results. Well, you know, obviously it's going to go on for days or weeks sure. with stragglers. But, you know, Russia's not kidding. They've demonstrated their hypersonics. India's got hypersonic weapons. That's why I'm trying to get people to understand this. God has isolated America in its sin because we have become a... Con and look, I love this country. I fought for this country, not as a veteran, but in the background. And I told people my background and, you know, ah, yeah. And I said, listen, what, why, why, what would you do with information? I told you, my favorite is, tell us who you really work for. And then we'll believe you. I said, <laughs> okay, you give me $2 million. I actually made this. This is a true story. You yeah. give me $2 million. I want to put in the family's bank account. It is given to them as a gift. And the father will agree. If he agrees, I'll let him tell you who he is and the, their mouth. You know what? Well, they can't do that. See, people <laughs> want other people to pay the price. Yeah. But they don't want to write the checks themselves. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have freeloaders of the church too. I mean, you know, it, it's it. We've we have a welfare state inside the church. We want pastor to do it all. You know, uh, you 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 pray me through this. You walk me through this. I'll walk with you, uh, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drag you. You know, in, in that that form in that sense. Uh, man, there's so much to unpack there. I love talking with you, uh, Steve. 
uh, no, normal, no more. I mean, that's a fact. I heard that several years ago. In fact, I walked into my kitchen and to my and I said to my wife, I said, the Lord said he's removing normal from our lives. <laughs> and she just looked at me like, oh, great, you know, with one of those things. But that's absolutely the truth. I mean, normal is gone. And I think, you know, as you were talking, I kept, I kept seeing this in my heart. The church is going to go through, it is going through this wash it's going through this rent cycle, if you will, of cleansing, getting the house back in order. And that's where judgment comes in. Judgment begins where? At the house of the Lord begins first there. And so I think what we're watching with all of this taking place, the, the debaucheries, the financial crisis, on and on, it's a part of cleansing and preparing the church, going back to what you said, for that glory. We don't see the miracles of, of Acts we don't see the miracles of the New Testament of the Apostle Paul and others uh, because the church is not ready. The same glory, the same anointing that heals can be the same anointing and glory that kills. It's a very powerful, weighty, tangible presence of God, and he doesn't rest on anybody. He doesn't rest on any vessel. He rests on those that are that are are clean, that are that are chosen, that have made themselves ready, uh, constant. Uh, uh, bring themselves to that place of, of sanctification. And, you know, this isn't a holier-than-thou attitude. This is just somebody that says, Lord, my heart's right towards you. And when that happens, then he begins to pour his glory out. And so I, I think what you're saying, and I'm trying to encapsulate it, is we're, we're not going to see what God has promised the church until there's a cleansing, because he's not going to give this give this away to these charlatans, you know, as you mentioned, these tricksters, uh, these jokesters that are out there uh, to do what? More harm to the body of Christ? To do more deceiving? We already have a deceiver coming that's going to do great signs and wonders and miracles, but God is going to counteract that with true men and women of God. And I believe those who are listening to us right now, they're watching us right now. I don't believe it's the shiny hair, slick shoed guy. I don't believe it's the person that's even on YouTube. I believe it's the grandmothers, the intercessors, the veterans, you know, the 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 Bobs and the and the Lisas and the and the Johns and whoever, you know, uh, they're out there, uh, Steve. And you've been planting seeds for all these years. We've been doing our part too, and we're just trying to bring that seed to fruition so that the Lord of Harvest would get His due reward. Jesus must get His due reward for why He died and bled on that cross, and Amen. it wasn't. It wasn't for what we're looking at now. This is not his prize. And, you know, I mean, I, I've learned early on that he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle, you know, right. not not a bride that's lined up, you know, in a second hand store uh, <laughs> outside the plastic surgeon's office trying to get rid of the wrinkles and maybe get a new uh, set of clothes. Now I'm being facetious on purpose, or at least my wife tells me I attempt humor and I tell her that's because she doesn't understand quantum humor. But anyway, <laughs> the point is, is that, you know, yeah. we're an externalistic society. We're absolutely forsaking the greater calling, the widows, the orphans, the veterans, right. Right. Uh, you know, uh, again, and then even you said something, even in that, the charlatans show up and they they will try and basically beat the money lenders of the temple at their own game, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've been blessed to be have a really neat Q Files audience and private briefing subscribers. And, you know, we have a ministry and outreach. We can't help them all, all veterans, or we can't help the widows. And you know what's interesting? You'll appreciate this. One widow claimed to be, you know, she was a widow, asked her for the death certificate of the husband. She had, this is true, 22 aliases, okay? 22 mm. aliases, a uh, a, um, mm. uh, a jail record that would make the uh, career criminal envious. And <laughs> her statement to me, this is true. I want people to understand this. The most critical gift we all need at this point is discerning of spirits as detailed in right. the gifts of the Holy Spirit in First Corinthians, okay, but she basically said, "I, I got I don't want to vomit on your audience, but I wanted to puke." <laughs> oh man of God, this is what she came at. You know, yeah. uh, I hate that. And then she said, <laughs> "I'm sure the Lord has spoken to you about me." The assumption here—you've got 
a, a career criminal, okay? Right. And this is true. Or I can tell you, Pastor, in case you didn't know it, I actually have Elvis Presley asking for financial help with Elvis's discharge paper from <laughs> uh, from the military. The problem is the guy wasn't, you know, 100 years old. And right. using a template that he bought on eBay, Elvis Presley, guy didn't know enough to change the address. I have a dear friend a very dear friends and God bless you, Bobby, that yeah. knows how to sort these people out. Okay. He's from the South, by the way. <laughs> and when you see this, I mean, it, it uh, becomes incredulous. Okay. Yeah. Or, or what people will go to, but here's the thing, the genuine people are needed. I want to just admonish all your listeners, our listeners, excuse me, together. If you see somebody in the, the, the supermarket, and they're struggling, you, they're looking, you know that, pay attention, say, Lord, every time I'm in a grocery line, I'm, I'm yeah. serious about this, yeah. make me sensitive to someone that can't do what I can do, but I want to do for them what only you can do, you know? The same thing I tell people, saying grace to me is what a wonderful privilege, you know? I, it's just people don't want my grace turning into an hour sermon, you know? But the point <laughs> is, is that, that, you know, ask the Lord, Lord, can I go over and buy that person's, and, and the, I've, I've had people testify this, Pastor, mm -hmm. and then people say, but why would you buy my lunch or dinner? And the answer, I, this is the answer God gave me, the Lord wants you, me to buy you this meal because it's on him, and thank you for your yeah. appreciation. I mean, I've seen people weep, you know, yeah, I didn't do it for that, but the point is, is that, and, and, and and they're they're shocked because it is a counter uh, movement to the gift of the Holy Spirit. I have friends that are super wealthy; they do so much good stuff. But this is something everyone can do. If you're eating in a restaurant, yeah. you can probably afford to buy somebody else a meal. If you're you know if you're uh, in a grocery store, I think the saddest thing is knowing someone's on Social Security and they just raised her food bill thirty percent. Look, I believe in being proactive. It was a widow that God sent the prophet, and you know, I'm sounding like preacher, to, to speak to. And, and because she met the prophet's need beyond her own, she didn't lack any meal or oil during the whole time, the widow of Zarephath, you know? And and so I think, right. ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's the neatest thing that we're going to all be called upon to basically deal with events that we never thought we'd see in our lifetime, emotions we'd never been able to uh, even uh, address in our lifetime. Uh, here's a part I don't want to say, but death and destruction that will, how should I say this, take away the fuzzy images of the NFL on the TV screen. Come on. Uh, or the, uh, let's just say this, the hedonistic pleasure of uh, whatever chip brand and whatever cola brand and, you know, the couch potato brand. And I, I, and, and, and I've seen something happening in America that's, that I think the whole world's seeing. And uh, Medvedev re uh, referred to it as the generals that are their, you know, their transgendered fat and he used the A words. So the point is, is that we're, we're watching a, an embellishment of um, obesity. Okay. Sure. That obesity is great. And I tell people, yeah, go ahead. You want to stay four or 500 pounds? I said, when the Giants come, and I'm kidding, and I'm not talking about a football team, they're <laughs> going to look at you and go, now there's a nice big uh, 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 meatball. And and look, it's going to be an hors d'oeuvre, you know? Yeah. And I said, you're going to be it, you know? It, it, the, the, yeah. it's, it's the, the ability to present to the world the most hideous presentation of uh, of uh, gluttony, surfeitingness, pornogra pornography, uh, mm -hmm. and now you know who bought the biggest porn. <laughs> this is great. You know about the biggest porn consortium in the world? It was some famous Jewish rabbi. Imagine that. Hear this Jewish rabbi who, in my way of thinking, that should go against everything. He's he's a rabbi. Yeah. He certainly knows the Torah. He probably's read the prophets. But now he's, you know, what are they going to call it? Rabbi hub instead of porn hub? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the insanity of the day. It is. It is. It's the insanity of the day. Or, or some famous minister's son gets caught, 
you know, coming out of a bar and his girlfriend's got her pants down. He used to have a university. You know, again, I'm trying to say this without, but but we let it slide, you know? Yeah. And, and again, I can talk to anybody about Jesus, no matter what they are coming from, if they're honest. If they're dishonest, I can't, okay? Nobody can. Right. But again, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus isn't as his people. Doesn't the scripture say, Pastor? that God's name is blasphemed to the Gentiles through his people? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you've got a demon possessed. I mean, when you see the guy, famous, famous um, television minister, and something takes over him, and he becomes another man. And, you know, I, I mean, and he's bragging he's one of the three or four uh, billionaires. I don't care about his money. I no. care about the fact that he maintains he's one thing, but he presents. Now, I use the word present. I'm talking about an evil spirit coming out of a human being and yeah. basically outpicturing. And you'll see it, you'll see a lot of people. The the ones that body modify, they split their tongues, they put the horns on, they do this, dye their eyeballs black, mm. then bitch. I'm sorry, they complain. I'll say the word bitch about, you mm. know, they can't see any longer. Well, they mm. were. You know, before they lost their physical eyesight, they certainly couldn't uh, see with the spiritual eyes. But mm -hmm. we're seeing outpicturing now. Outpicturing means the demons that have been hidden are now so bold that they just don't care. They're just coming out and they're showing themselves. These are the most hideous creatures known in the history of the world. What we would call monsters, ghouls, gremlins, uh, goblins, you name it. But they're right. all coming. And I wrote a book that's interesting years ago and i thought lord why hasn't that 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 book sold as well as some of the others i didn't write it just but it, it was called little creatures okay mm -hmm. gates of hell are opening and then i understood i just understood this again because people are saying i'm seeing all these weird things i said you need to buy this book that book was written i think 10 years ago maybe mm -hmm. and telling people what the uh preda or supernatural evil that's coming into our generation and the most innocent children's cartoons are some of the most insipidly evil, inculcated yeah. manifestations of what I would call hell pus. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and I only, you know, I mean, it's true. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that that what we're seeing now is mystery Babylon, in my opinion, not no longer a mystery. And this is the other thing that gets people, you know, God's not going to judge America. <laughs> he isn't, you right. know. And, 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 you know, Mystery Babylon, and, and I told, I have sent somebody an email today saying, remember, Mystery Babylon is the mother of harlots. It's a spirit. You can right. have more than the geographical, I, you know, you know, this evangelical world said, they're going to rebuild Babylon on the plains of Shinar. No, they're not. You mm -hmm. know, and, and so, so the, the, the insanity of charts that people would rather see somebody's chart telling them what's right. going to happen than right. seek the Lord for themselves and find out from his perspective, number one, this is what I want you to watch. And, you know, God's not going to call everybody to be a uh, pastor Faircloth. Me, he, he has, if God is eternal, here's the thing I wish everyone would do, and I really do, I pray that they will do this, is read the 139th Psalm. More right. numerous than the sand of the sea, so are my thoughts towards you. Well, you know, if any of you've ever been down on yourself, I, I know that world, oh, you know, yeah. you can't you can't think of three things you like about yourself. And God's saying, you ever walked on the beach, Steve? You know, in essence, we limit the Holy One of Israel sin because right. we think that we know more than God knows, you know, and we don't. We don't. We can't. We're right. temporal. And unless God reveals it and reveals himself, his nature, his love his character, his power, mm -hmm. his presence, his protection, then we don't have anything to fall back on except assumption. And the day of assumption is coming to an end. It's coming to an end. Yes. And again, that word that, you know, the norm, I remember being in a conference, we threw him on in uh, Branson, Missouri, uh, the True Legends Conference, I think it was three years ago. And at the end of it, I was talking on something, whatever the theme of the conference was, and I said, just out of the blue, I said, and the Lord wants me to tell you, normal will never be again. The word <laughs> normal will never be again. Yeah. And then it was interesting because wow. I saw, you know, I saw a transformational point in time where that time changed 
where what had been normal, no longer what's normal. And then obviously right. we know the COVID, the lockdown, the shutups, the shut-ins, the murder. And and look at Pastor, you know, the scripture tells us, and I want people to really think about this because we're going to all be challenged with the guilt, the manipulation, the threat, the coercion. Why did most Christians take the COVID vaccine when they never even asked the Lord if they should? And the scripture is so right. clear. Woe unto them that lean on the arm of flesh where they give you the vaccine. Right. Well, you're just going for something. Well, do the people that died then and went into heaven, and, I'm, and there are Christians that died, there are Christians that are dying. Sure. Uh, but why? And I'm going to ask you this question. Why would they automatically assume that the very evil they're aware of would do something good for them and submit to the mandate, in my opinion, mandate of hell over the word of God? Why? And and these are people that many of them were in Bible studies together. I, 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 I think the obvious reason is obvious, but there's something more there. In your opinion, watching it from, you know, your position, how did you bring that, reconcile it, or even identify it? Well, there, there's no relationship. It's all about relationship. If you, we talked about it yesterday, by the way, go to Q Files, guys, and sign up for it, and you'll get all that information. But, you know, relationship, when you don't have a relationship with God, then there's a disconnect. You can't hear from him. You, you don't hear that small, still inner voice. You can't hear the Holy Spirit telling you, hey, this is wrong, or this is right, or let me explain to you, or let me show you. He will. He, he'll, 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 he'll give you the, the mysteries of the world. I mean, that's what he wants to do. He's your father. And I think that a lot of people, they just, like you said, I mean, they just went for the arm of the flesh. Uh, was it knee-jerk reaction? Just, just go do it. Everybody else is doing it. Oh, by the way, super football players getting it and this this superstar is getting it so it's got to be okay instead of listening to number one the holy spirit but then listening to uh the people you have interviewed the information that you have given uh, the plethora of of people that have been out there warning and and no they just they just dove into it because it seemed like that was a thing to do so i think everything goes back to relationship you're responsible for your life as a believer, and you're responsible to hear from God. You cannot depend on other people to lead you. That's not how this is designed. I'm a pastor, not a priest. I'm a priest in the sense of the Word of God, but I'm not a priest that, that I have to, you know, give you daily guidance. You have to do that. And I, I think, here we go, what we've done as pastors and leaders is we made people codependent on us codependent on the clergy and that's exactly wrong you need to be uh totally dependent upon the holy ghost and god himself <clears throat> excuse me through the word of god through meditation through prayer and through listening to the holy spirit so well I again, should... and, and and the scripture is to as many as you know, he, he, how, to as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Right. And one of the saddest things is, is that, the, and I think this is by design, the professional clergy, the megastars, they want the position that only Jesus deserves. They want people right. looking to them, telling them what to do, telling them they're okay, instead of looking to the King of Kings. Lord, <clears throat> Lord. You know, I, I tell people this. There's no church choir that shows up on your right or left when you stand before Jesus. There's nobody. You, even your wife is going to say, you know, she's not going to be the, if, 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 if I don't have a wife, I guess I'm sure you don't, know, but there's not going to be any nagging wife saying, I told you you'd stand before Jesus. And, he, and, and Jesus turns to the nagging wife and says, guess what? Heaven hasn't got any room for you either. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's not the nature right. of God. But what I'm right, saying right. is, is that people cannot take anything with them when they stand before the Lord one-on-one. -on -one. And there are people that think that the um, luggage that the world wants to load them up with, you know, it's all about him. You know, I mean, it's all about him, him being Jesus Christ. And so, you know, I, I say this to people too. If a man can't, if a man came, claims, I'm sorry, if, let me choose this carefully. If a man claims to be a follower of Jesus Christ, right. redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, 
a child of heaven, a son or a daughter, in case they're female, and they can't even name the name of Jesus. Right. I don't, I don't buy it. I don't, you know, and I want, and you know, this is something I think the Lord taught me. He says, Steve, Christ is my title. Jesus, my name. So I say that and the people say, don't you know that Jesus name is Zeus? No, it's not. Don't you know that before Abraham was, Jesus was before Abraham was, I am, you know, and, and, and the confusion now is coming in. People want to use a Hebrew name. Hey, I've got to, if they want to call Jesus Yeshua, Call him Yeshua. If, if you, you know, uh, you know, but but live like you honor him as that name represents. But you know, there's only one name given under heaven that a man can be saved. Right. And so I tell people, where is and I say this, I can tell more about a person's walk with the Lord through two things, and I blew it and I'm not blowing anymore, having them pray with you. Yeah. And having, and, and the Lord said, Steve, note how they approach me in prayer. Yeah, right, right. Because if there's an attitude of arrogance, if there's an attitude of uh, what I would call submissive, or, or like like a person I used to know, used to, um, you know, well, my walk with Jesus is personal and, and it doesn't matter to anybody else. That's not true. The right. Bible said, if we don't confess Jesus before men, he won't confess us before his Father, which is in heaven. And, you know, he's he's not... See, I think the thing is, people think of what I would call the optional gospel uh, chapters and verses, okay? And they think, well, this is optional, or that's optional. Well, if it does, I don't agree with it. None of it's optional, you know? Right. Jesus said, if he be lifted sure. up, he'll draw a man unto him. How can you draw anybody in church as a sinner unto Jesus if you ain't preach about Jesus and there's no point in going to a church where, you know, the guy wants to brag about his last, it used to make, oh, some fame, I won't mm. tell you his name. I went to some place in Arizona with some famous pastor once, this is 20 years ago, and mm. he's talking about a, a hole in one with a, you know, coming to Jesus is like you've golfed all your life and you get that hole in one. You know, I said under my breath, I was in the process, you know, I said, yeah. I hear one more thing about a whole one. I'm going to go grab whatever golf club I can find and, <laughs> and hit the guy. Now, of, yeah. course, of course, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to do it. I didn't. But the bottom line is, is that that's the ludicrousness of yeah. the gospel that's presented. There's unlike anything unto the Lord, who is like unto thee, O Lord, amongst gods. Who is? There's none. None. And yet, the, 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 the failure to lift up Jesus is still, I guess that's one of my um, my perplexing points of interaction with God on, you know, because the only way I see that that will happen, Pastor, out of people who have had transformational encounters with Jesus is through the miraculous. And I'm talking the real miracles. The yeah. thing that concerns me is we know the devil, the Antichrist, comes on the scene with lying signs and wonders. Yeah. And I've often said, Lord, is that because of the absence of the real signs and wonders i mean it's just a rhetorical question i don't have an answer right. for that. but again ladies yeah. and gentlemen signs follow them that believe well then ladies and gentlemen if the signs follow them that believe then there's a bunch of dead end signs i mean seriously you know and and so so the most transformative encounter in the world is one person coming to jesus as lord and savior because there's no way that any human can how should I say this? Begin to uh, understand what made that man or woman or child or whoever is coming to the Lord, the composite emotions, feelings, life experiences, hopes, dreams, failures, disappointments. No one can do it. Nobody but Jesus can do that. And yeah. isn't that wonderful, Pastor, that only Jesus can do that? And that's what we present. We're in a we're in this wonderful, uh, uh, I guess you'd say, mode and calling being like the woman at the well come meet a man come meet a man yeah, come meet come. jesus yeah or or the blind man born blind yeah. and he's sitting with his eyesight and the religious yippie crits you know and hypocrites <laughs> are you know well, who did this to you they could care less whether he got his eyes back but yeah. see we have to understand this and I, I i'm you know i don't know how much longer we got but the the idea is this there is nothing plus jesus it is Jesus who is all in all. The mm -hmm. Holy Spirit's job is to lift up Jesus. That's what Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do yeah. when 
he came. So, you know, the thing is, is that, and I don't know of any time in the history of the world, I'm sure you're seeing it too, where God's people need the action of the comforter more than we do now. I, I got to tell you, there are times I think I'd scream. Well, I can't, I try, I don't have voices to do it, but you know, mm -hmm. you want to pull your hair out and well, <laughs> forgive me. I don't want to pull any of my hair out. <laughs> and that's probably that. not the best thing to say, but the bottom line is, <laughs> it's that we, a grateful heart, I just I remember when we were grateful to God, when 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 this country stood for things. I remember when we took care of the veterans. Yeah. I, I remember when we lived up to promises. I remember where a mom and dad was, you know, uh, uh, I remember the leave it to beaver days. I do, yeah. you know, Wally yeah. and, and uh, you know, June Cleaver. But the point is, is that I remember the wholesomeness of, but everything now is profane. And I got to tell everybody this. You don't think Genesis 6-4 is a master key to understanding all human history, all human achievement, the sons of God, fallen angels on earth, not in heaven, came, had sex with earth women. That's where everything that now we're dealing with at this point of the closing of the age, everything that can be has been perverted. And isn't it interesting now, Pastor, we're right back to where we were in the, uh, I would say this, prior to the uh, advent of Christianity, with the exception of God calling Abraham and the chosen people, me chosen out. Abraham was a Chaldean, okay? Right. That's not a football team. Abraham out of Ur, the Chaldees <laughs> have I called you. So the, yeah. the thing is, is that we have been brought to this point, and all of us are going to have that one minute, this is the last thing I'll say, that one minute when everything dawns on us and that one minute there is no more uh, no more remembrance of the former things because it'll only be the present things and the present walk with Jesus that either sustains us or and 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 brings us home meaning going to be where he is in his father's house or may mention or will be the uh high hot rod road to hell you know right. Right. That's where that's where we're at. We're so close, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure my heart literally is right, you know, any moment, because I'm not talking about the eminency of Jesus' second return. I believe that has to have certain things happen, fulfillment. I'm talking about the eminency of a nuclear war and 250 million children have died. So we're talking about 250 million Americans. You know, I'm talking the all the abortions, sacrifice, and everything. We're, God said, I offered you mercy. You won't take mercy. You're going to have an eye for an eye. And that's going to be 250 million Americans dead, as exemplified by the Rockefeller Foundation, the Deagle Foundation report that by next year, supposedly we're going to lose 250 million people, Pastor. I would think that would be motivation. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I would say so. I, I think the alarm bells are ringing. We're sounding the alarm, Steve. We're we're taking risk to be an alarmist. That's fine. That's the way it goes. Uh, but, you know, if you were headed off a bridge, uh, I would warn you as much as I could. I'd stand in front of the vehicle uh, or what have you. So uh, I want to give you the opportunity just in a moment here that uh, you would just pray for the body of Christ and pray for the those that are out there that don't know Jesus uh, and pray for those that are struggling. There's so many that are struggling with fear and anxiety. Uh, but before I do that, I want to mention your your DVD, if you don't mind, because you're you're talking about Genesis six, and, and let me tell you something. I had this seg segue lined up, but when you said that, if you don't, you guys don't get this. My family has watched this, and it has opened my eyes to see it actually unearth as you're filming. Oh, anybody could take something in an artifact and say, "Hey, look what we found," you know, and you, then you wonder, right? This you're not going to wonder. And what it does for me is it gives you that revelatory knowledge to say, yeah, first of all, the Bible is real. And now I understand why there's that visitation. Why is a 2.0? Why we're going to see the things in the last days? You got to get it. You got to go to stevequell.com. It's not a commercial. It's an absolute tool and weapon in your hand. You got to have information in these last days. So if you would go there, stevequell.com. And there's so many other things to do there. But Steve, I, we could do this for another hour. I, I love speaking with you. I enjoy this time with you. Uh, any final comments? And then I'd like for you to pray us on out of here. I think that the I can't give a better admonition than trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding or unto your own understanding. 
in all your ways, in all your days, and all your nights. Acknowledge him, the Lord, and thank him for leading you. And I, I would like to thank you for letting me pray for people. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we will enter your courts with thanksgiving in our heart. We will enter your courts with praise. For Lord, even though these are the end of days, you're the only one that could declare the end at the beginning. And Lord, that just really does excite me. And God, Pastor Benjamin and I claim in agreement as two, two or more touching with all those who are agreeing with us for transformational encounters of people that will absolutely be uh, changed for eternity because yes. they listen to our program together, Lord. Because, Lord, you wouldn't have had the situation all so uniquely tied together as you did last night. The scripture you wanted to be shared and the meditation of Pastor Faircloth in the night God, except you are doing something, and it's going to be marvelous in our sight. Lord, I pray for the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the literal glorious fear of the Lord, the honor of the Lord, the magnificence of the Lord to come upon your people, because, Lord, only then can we depart from evil. And, Lord, I pray for the spirit of revelation and wisdom and the acknowledging yes. of Jesus yes. to everyone that watches this um, interview, Lord, and, and then watch yesterday's and continues to be blessed by Pastor Faircloth's message on Sunday, Lord. And I thank you for, for raising up a shepherd that will go and speak life to the lost sheep, Lord, and to the black sheep. And Lord, say, come on home. Jesus loves you. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I pray for a revelation of Jesus, like everyone who's ever read the gospel of John, Lord, would have a new understanding of who you are. And God, we release the spirit of revelation and wisdom yes. in the mighty name yes. of Jesus. We release the gifts of the Holy Spirit on all of those listening, that they might have the discerning of spirits, the word of wisdom, the working of miracles, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, the prophecy, the tongues and interpretation, Lord, put into a biblical context of the end time outpouring and not screwball outpouring, Lord. We yes. just thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Lord, It's it, there's just all our confusion. You understood. And God... Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the heart of God. And Lord, I pray, too, that you would put a supernatural uh, stainless steel in all of our spines to deal with yeah. what we're going to have to deal with in the coming days, weeks, and months. Yes. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you will yes. literally, God, pour forth and you'll reach forth and touch Lord, our lives as we reach forth and touch the hem of your garment, and God, that you would virtue, that virtue you said you felt go out from you, that it would literally flow into us, Lord, into the praise of your glory. And so, therefore, Lord, I ask you to continue to bless Pastor Faircloth, his fellowship and his uh, preaching and everything, his preaching, teaching, and outreaching. And Lord, I thank you for the wonderful opportunity to once again lift up the name of Jesus, yes. because God, only you can draw men unto you, and yes. that's the way you've chosen to do it. Bless each and every yes. intercessor that prays for Pastor Benjamin, yes. prays for me, prays yes. for us, prays for those who are, are, are talking about Jesus. Yes. And so, Lord, I just commit this day, I ask for your protection over yes. every single soul that listens yes. to Pastor Faircloth, those who need to give their hearts to you, that they will do it. Yes. Lord, that you'll give them a transformational encounter. Lord, I know that the scripture says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Lord, for those who have struggled in fear and, and even now want to take their own life, give them, God, that yes. joy that comes in the morning. And yes. I rebuke the spirit of suicide. Yes murder and early death off of everyone listening to this podcast broadcast and lord we just thank you for the lives that lord you will deliver each and every one that you put in pastor Faircloth's care my care our mutual care lord that you'll deliver them from the great evil that's coming upon the land as the plagues of egypt are poured out and yes. rachel will once again weep for her children which will yes. not be found in the land god bless you lord we yes. thank you for this lord we're just so grateful yes, god a the, the, the thousand tongues to sing lord and new mm. words to to praise you with god yes. because we've allowed the language that mm. you've given us to be hijacked 
to be twisted, perverted, and and absolutely brought into the realm of meaninglessness. But Lord, there's nothing greater than the songs, the old hymns, all hail the power of Jesus' Jesus, name. Let angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal crown, the diadem. For Lord, you are truly Lord of all. And we hail you who saved us by your grace and crown you king of all. Yes. No, so be it, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right. But God is good. Uh, we could do this a little longer. <laughs> uh, Steve, I really appreciate your time, guys. SteveQuell.com. Please check out his ministry and 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 pray about sowing a seed to what they're doing with the veterans and widows and all the other ministries he's got going on. It's definitely a worthy cause. Steve, you're awesome, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you very much, Pastor. And by the way, Thank you for um, allowing me to come into your congregation on Sunday, because I got to tell you, brother, it it's flint sharpens flint. And it's so refreshing to me to get a fresh word from the Lord, Rhema. And the nice thing about manna, you know, is it, it's got to be partaken of in the day it's given. And, uh, you know, there's no such thing as freeze dried manna. OK, and that's <laughs> that's I want people to understand that. So a fresh word. From the Lord, how how sweet it is, a word freshly spoken in season. And we are the season right now where we need, day by day, we need to be able to partake of that feast from heaven and to make a uh, attack on the Pharisees and their leaven to see the captives go free. Yes. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the nation you know, the nation we love, the nation that so many have been blessed by, no longer exists. And it's going to be obvious that God is going to show the people that the false sense of, uh, well, things will go on forever. Oh, we've been through this before. I'm asking, I guess, pastor, for a reality check, a wake-up yes. call, and that God would give to your uh, listeners, congregation followers, that he'll open heaven for those who need to have, see heaven, and to hell, literally, the, that the floors yes. of hell will open. Because only then will men depart from evil when they see the reality of hell. And I want everyone to remember this also, 250 million people, the minute a nuclear war starts, are going into eternity. The majority of them will not know Jesus. That's a horrific statement. It's a horrific thought. And the emotion, I can't even catch up with the emotion, but it will come to pass. God bless you, Benjamin. It will. We don't want the blood on our hands. Amen. I appreciate you, Steve. Thanks again, guys. SteveCall.com. We love you all. Blessings.